G'day, I'm Bruce and today I'm going to try and get this TK Bedford going and it's been sitting for about 20 years or more. This is actually a crane truck with the high ab up on top there. <coughs> Everything's pretty dusty and plenty of hornets and look at that, the hornet nest is even up inside the intake there. I wonder how many more are sitting in there like that. They've been sitting there for a while. Bit of a ridge in there. Mm. Sounds like that's pretty dry. Looks like it's um, spent most of its life in this shed by the look of it. Um, body work's still not too bad for something this age. A few more hornets nests there. <coughs> When will that open up? I don't think so. I think it must be locked or it won't open. It looks like it's a 6354 Perkins. From what I can see in here, it's pretty dark, but I'd say that's what it is. Um, pretty good old engines, these. A lot of trucks had these in, and they were quite reliable. But usually pretty good starters in cold weather, too. The old Perkins. Yeah, 354 cubic inches. This one's a non-turbo version, which... I think they were 120 horsepower and they were fairly common. Got a couple of lights rigged up now so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna have to undo this diesel line where it's got this water trap, it's got like a sediment trap, and we've got the glass filter. I'll try and get that line off of there. <coughs> it's probably as hard as a piece of steel. Well, it's gonna come undone. A bit of diesel around there's probably probably helped. To get a bit of heat on that, maybe. Oh, it's coming. Right, let's get that off of there. Well, that's a good start. That's somewhere where we can, <coughs> somewhere where we can plug our auxiliary fuel tank into, and see if we can get, see if we can get some fresh diesel. Look how old that diesel is. Yeah, you can see the old diesel in that, in the bottom of those filters there. We have to try and see if we can flush most of that out. the spot where we can set our tank up and see if we can get diesel coming out of there shove that onto there right that's tight on there it won't need a clamp <coughs> piece of rag right so we've got the fuel system hooked up to our auxiliary tank now. We always just have a little bit of fuel doctor additive in with the fuel. So if there's some, something in there a bit sticky in the injector pump or anywhere along the line, it may just help free it up. It, some people would say, fat chance. Other people would say, well, at least there might be some chance. So we'll work on the some chance thing that it might help free the injector pump up a little bit. Next up, we're gonna check the oil. See whether the old engine's got any oil left in it. Just trying to keep it clean so I don't put dirt over all over the stick. And I don't think there's anything on there at all. If there is, it's only a drop on the stick. So we're going to definitely have to add some oil to this engine. Lucky we checked. Yeah, you just never know till you pull that stick and have a good look. I have to undo that cap on there, let that come undone. 
right. I don't want to drop any of the dirt in. Right, she's off. Without dropping a heap of dirt in there. Doesn't look too bad inside. Um, so obviously we'll have to get some engine oil and put in there and these old things hold a fair bit of oil too so we'll probably have to put a fair bit in before we get much on the stick. That's all in part of the fun of getting these old things going is double checking everything as we go that we don't end up um, creating a lot of damage along the way. And of course we will put water in this one. Um, I see it has a little bleed hose or whatever it is here, <coughs> it'll, it'll, it'll be pretty dry, I'd reckon. I'll put that over the end of that. Did that come undone that easy? Yeah, it did come undone easy. Yep, oh well. Something's easy. Just having a look around the engine, look what I find down here. Here's another snake skin. After all, this is Australia, and we've got some of the deadliest snakes in the world, especially our famous Eastern Brown. So that was just hanging there. So I hope they've all moved out. So I'll go around now, and I'm going to work the priming bulb on the outboard line and see if I can get some diesel to come right through to the pump. I'm just going to work this priming bulb here on this outboard fuel line. And if all goes to plan, somewhere along the line we might see some diesel start to come out of the side of the injector pump where the bleeder is. It's amazing how much fuel it takes to get fuel back up to the injector pump on these old things after they've been sitting for a long time. So I don't know where the fuel goes over 20 years or whatever, whether it evaporates or every joint has a slight leak. I think I can hear something happening over the other side. I can hear a bit of air spitting out. I've got a tin underneath that to catch the diesel, the old diesel. These old Perkins diesels appear to have two um, bleeders on the side of the injector pump. And I suppose if we undo both bleeders, we stand a bit more chance of getting all the air out we possibly can. This truck's definitely worth saving and with a bit of work it could be put back on the road again and used and it's also got a high ab on it which, which makes it a bit unusual. We're going to put this high quality mobile um, diesel oil in it and we've got the drum pump and everything set up here ready to go. If I can get this rigged up right it's going to be a lot easier than what it is. Um, certainly easier to do it this way than what it is to try and pour it into a, into a jug and then try and pour it in. Not much room to work in there and we'd be here for a month of Sundays if we're just going to try and put in a one litre jug or a half a litre jug at a time. So we've got this drum pump here, making the job so easy. Easy is always good, better than hard. So if we can do anything the easy way, we'll go that way. By the time you get to my age, all the time you're looking for easy. The oil may have even leaked out through the bottom. It's been sitting here for that long. If it did have a leak on the on the drain bung on the sump, well it's quite dusty and everything underneath there so I suppose over a period of time it could have soaked up 20 litres of oil and it is a bit oily underneath there so we really don't know. truck a birthday anyway. These old Perkins, they were certainly good engines in their day. Get this dipstick out. Plenty of dirt and dust here so I've got to watch what I'm doing. What are we up to? 
Try and put it back in there without, without putting a heap of dirt in there with it. Give it a little wipe up there where it's touched the dust. Right, back in she goes. Right, now we've got oil on the stick and we're up to the max. I don't know whether you can see that or not. Whenever I'm going out to a place other than my place, I've got to be fully prepared with batteries and jumper leads and oil and water and all the containers and all the stuff that you might need, spanners, screwdrivers. You don't know really exactly what you need until you get there and sometimes you might have just one small item missing and you've got to go back home and get the whatever you're, whatever you're missing. Sometimes home can be a long way away too, so you've got to be really prepared. We fitted the battery into the battery holder and whatever, we're going to rig it up properly and we'll probably put another battery with some jumper leads possibly straight onto the starter motor in case these other connections aren't real good but anyway while I was underneath here doing the battery thing look what else is sitting under here so if it was a hot summer's day you'd want to be pretty careful walking around here you didn't stand on one of them we don't, don't know what sort it is but most snakes around here are poisonous we don't normally do this but we're going to try putting some water into this engine we'll put the water in now while we're still working on the jumper leads and that'll give it a chance for the water to seep past the thermostat. Some of the older thermostats had like a little valve thing on the side so the air could come up and the water could go down. So that's probably about the best we're going to do. So we've got this arrangement rigged up with this little rattle on the end of the pipe. Let's see if we can get some water to flow in through the header tank. Right on, that's the way. I don't know how quick it's going to run down into there, but... Yeah, so far it's going in there quicker than what I thought it would. Let me get quiet in there. Oh well. It says it's full on there, but we can let that sit in there. Looks like the header tank may have a leak on it there. I can see it dripping out the, at the bottom of the header tank down here. But it's still full up there so um, we'll just have to leave it and see. I've got some sandpaper here and some cutters. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut up some of this and go over and clean up those old battery leads a bit and so we get a decent connection because we want all that sort of stuff as good as we can get it. So we need every chance we can possibly get of making this thing spin over quick enough to fire um, then we'll probably crack the um, probably crack the pipes on the injectors and see if we can get any old diesel out of the injector lines themselves so that, um, you know we don't want to be pumping dirty old diesel up into the injectors and they get stuck and then you've got a motor that's got a miss in it then you've got to pull the find out which injector pull the injector get it all clean we'll, we'll see if we can um, bypass all those all those problems that could happen. So we'll just work our way through that stuff and I'll go around at the moment and clean up the battery terminals. Hopefully we can see some shiny metal there somewhere, I hope. Probably should have went for a bit more coarser sandpaper, but we've sanded these lug ends on the end of the cables. We've ended up putting some um, some fairly new looking terminals on there but the lug ends have just been hanging down near the dirt for years and they were really badly corroded but anyway they're all polished up with a bit of sandpaper now it'll give us some chance really don't like look at that positive cable there how dodgy is that insulation that's just just melted away look at it there's the rubbers just rubbers just melting and it's got had a bit of tape put around there and a bit of tire wire they just hold it in place I can see why the snakes have taken up residence in this truck because wherever there's rats, there's snakes. And obviously the rats have been here and chewed a big hole out the back of the seat. And I'd say that the snakes have moved in and thought, right, we, here's a free meal for us.
just going to give it a starter motor a tap with the brass hammer and see if we can um, shake the brushes a bit so they might make contact. If I can get a bit of a go at it. to give it a bit of a vibration to shake it a bit. Right, let the sails crank over. So the motor's not seized. That's a pretty good start. Um, I think I'll go ahead and crack the lines at the injectors. Just see if I can get rid of that old diesel before we get too serious. And obviously it must have um, must have a pretty bad positive lead, I'd say, going from the, the main battery up to the starter motor. Just hooked up a second battery because I reckon the first battery, I reckon the lead, the main positive battery lead might be pretty cooked. So I've got a second battery just outside on the ground there with another set of jumper leads coming off it. Once I did that, I could get some sense out of the starter motor cranking the engine then. There's always a couple, every engine always has a couple of awkward ones to get at. Or if you can put a spanner on them then you can't turn them, but I guess that's all part of the challenge. Yep, getting them. Again, just probably old diesel in the lines. Lines might even be might even be empty too, I don't know where it goes, but it, it can just disappear. Right, get them. Uh, somehow we've got to check our stopper to make sure that the stopper, that'll be the stopper cable there. I'm guessing, obviously that's the throttle. And the stopper cable, yeah, the stopper cable looks like it's still free. Could be going off a little bit further too, it's not quite not quite going right off. I'm always a bit suspicious of things like that, but I guess it was running before. That's all we can really say. I'm just gonna bleed the injector pump again just to be sure, because everything is pretty dry in there. So I reckon if I undo the bleeders on the pump and just make sure there's no air there before I have before I really start, you know, before I start warming the starter motor up too much, put it that way. We've just rebled the pump now. We might have got the slightest bit of air out, but every bit helps. And we have got a bit of fuel coming out of some injector lines at the injectors, but but not all. So with a bit more cranking and just see what happens. We don't want to overheat that starter motor. We've got fuel at all injectors now. If you notice, my smile's probably starting to get a little bit bigger. Um, so if we've got fuel at all injectors now, we stand a pretty good chance, I reckon. I'll go and tighten up all the injector lines now and see how we go. They're the easy ones. These are not too bad. There's worse motors than these old. Worse motors out there than what these are, that's for sure. And if you're like me and you've learned on old school, well, I can understand all this, but if I had to go to common rail or something, I'd be you could. A nice easy one. Run through, double check. We've got all the injector lines done up now. We're going to give it a small spray with Aero Start and just see if we can get it to fire at all. <laughs> we
we just had a vacuum lock in our outboard tank, so maybe that's why she only ran for so long before she shut down. Just had to loosen the cap off a bit. So it's actually got, it's actually got a little bleeder in the center of the cap. I forgot to undo that. We may have to bleed the pump again, but it was all my fault. I should have undone the, the little air valve on the center of the outboard cap. Just forgot about it. So right, we've got that. So I'll jump in and give her another try. I've got the bleeder screw out and I can hear air coming out, so that's probably been our problem. It's always better if you take the little bleeder screw right out and, you know, pump a fair bit of diesel through, then um, you can be sure that you pretty well purge the system of air. That sounds, that's sounding pretty good there now. If I can get that bleeder back in without dropping it. Which is always a bit of a challenge. Just going to undo these injector lines again. There must be more, more air in here than what I thought because it should be trying a bit harder than that. Especially after it revved up and did run. But I know there's probably air in the in the filters, but I am a bit reluctant just to go undoing anything around the filters. Everything's just so dirty. I'm a bit worried that I might put dirt back into the system. But if you look around the top of this filter here, somewhere there, it could be that. It could be a bleeder to bleed the air out. But I'm a bit reluctant just to really. Uh, there's another filter on the other side too. I'm a bit reluctant just to go and undo that in case I. In case I go backwards, if we get dirt in the system, we'll, we don't want that. That's the last thing we want. So ready for another try. Snakes be gone. Get going, snakes. Get moving out in the bush. I really like these engines. This thing hasn't been running for 20 plus years and look at it, it's just running like a Swiss watch. After a while, um, with a lot of air, I had to get the air out of the system. I did make a mistake and didn't uh, open up the little air bleeder on the on the outboard tank. That was a mistake first up. So I don't know whether that created a bit more air or not. But anyway, we had to just keep cracking the lines, cracking the, the bleeder on the side of the pump. But it does have a leak around the front of the injector pump. And it may have been there, uh, some sort of a leak in the past because it looks pretty dirty looking around the pump. Like there's a lot of dust and that, a lot of dirt settled on around there. But anyway, you really need a mirror. We haven't got a mirror with us. We really need a mirror to look around there. We've shut it down because of that leak. And um, one day, if we get around it, we'll come back with a mirror 
and we'll have another go at it and see if we can run it again with a mirror so we can look around in front of that injector pump and just find out where that leak is. The owner might be able to get this truck going if we can get the clutch and a few other brakes and a few other things working on it and he might be able to use the crane that around his property to have a bit of a clean up. He might be able to gather together a bit more scrap metal. There's a fair bit of metal and, and iron or whatever you'd say around this yard. Bits and pieces of old stuff, pretty old farm. I've known Rob, the owner of the truck, since high school, so we've been friends for many, many years, and I thought it'd be a pretty fair challenge to come out and see if I could get his old truck going again. And if he wants to, he can use it around his property, and it's such a handy thing with that high ab on the back if he wants to have a clean up or pick anything up that's heavy, um, he can use it again. That'll be it for this episode. So until next time, thanks very much for watching.